Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 135 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. What's up, Elvis? Not a whole lot. What's going on with you, Barb? Not a whole lot. It's Friday afternoon. Mm. Gonna go, gonna hang out on the weekend and relax. I tell you, it is a well-deserved Friday. It seems like this week's been a bit of a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> some are better than others. That is true. Some days you're the windshield, and some days you're the bug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the windshield. You're the bug. Yeah, I think I was a bug this week. <laughs> Do you guys do any implant planning and surgical guide fabrication? Um, yeah, but it's really not my forte, but yes, we do. I just got into co-diagnostic this week. Nice. We bought into that. I was in training all week for it. It's it's interesting. I kind of enjoy it. We'll see how it goes. Good. See if I'll puncture some sinuses or hit some nerves. I'm Ooh, kind of excited about it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like dentistry for you. There you go. It's a big thing for uh, labs to get into that and print surgical guides. So I guess we got to go where it's going. Yep. True to that. So what's happening this week? Well, this week we have a treat. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do this. Ahoy, me hearties! <laughs> do we have a tale for thee? How was my pirate talk? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah? No Johnny Depp, but, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> So when you think of pirates, you usually don't think of dentistry. I don't think pirates really had good teeth. But on this week's episode, we welcome aboard a dentist and a technician that is just ruling the seas down in Georgia. Dr. Jack Bell, who I happen to call Dr. Allen way too many times (laughs) in the interview, so I'm apologizing for that. Dr. Jack Bell comes from a long line of dentists. And on their vessel, a float down south, they have an in-office lab called Excel Dental Lab, ran by Alan Patch Garcia. He goes by Patch. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how this practice with a lab has perfected workflows and grown over the years with technology. They are doing things a lot of labs are not even doing yet on their own. And it's hard to remember listening to this interview that it's all done for one practice. You're probably wondering why I did this intro with so many pirate references. A little bit. Yeah. Well, that's because Dr. Bell and Patch have called their stellar team Bad to the Bone. Bad to the Bone Dentistry, (laughs) with a logo they hoist on a black flag when they seat a full arch case. Nice. It's pretty awesome. So batten down the hatches and grab a grog as we chat with Dr. Jack Bell and Patch Garcia. Dental Services Group is proud to support the National Board of Certification in Dental Technology and proudly promote certification for dental technicians throughout their national network of laboratories. The CDT designation sets certified dental technicians apart from others in the field demonstrating a mastery of knowledge and applied skills in the art of dentistry. Certification also raises the standards of dental health through education in all aspects of dental technology. At Dental Services Group, they believe dentistry plays a significant role in the healthcare ecosystem and is committed to providing solutions to benefit the overall health and well being of the patient. Visit NBCCERT to learn more about becoming a CDT and dentalservices.net to learn more about how DSG supports the dental community. And they support our podcast. So thank you, DSG. Voices from the Bench. The interview. You can't make it right, make it bright, baby. <laughs> ah, I hope I caught that. <laughs> so we'd like to welcome to the podcast today a nice, interesting combination that we honestly, Barb, I don't think we get enough of. Great. And this is a dentist, Dr. Jack Allen, and his in-office lab technician, Alan Garcia, that goes by Patch. That's correct, Elvis. Is that a legal name or is that like a nickname? Uh, no, I can't sign any paperwork with that. My real name's Alan Patrick Garcia, and my nickname's Patch from Patrick. 
Oh, I see. I like that. This all came about because our good mutual friend, Sherry Weatherby from Whitmix, had a post where she got a t-shirt from you guys that said, Bad to the Bone Dental. And being the curious person I am, I'm like, what the heck is this? Bad to the Bone. There's got to be a story behind this. Lo and behold... Months later, here we are talking. Like I mentioned, Dr. Jack Allen. Jack Bell, actually. but I... Jack Bell. Sorry. Dr. Jack Bell. How are you, sir? Doing good, man. Doing good. Yeah, I can go by Allen. Depends on how this recording goes, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I'll take Jack Bell for now. Uh, doing good. Man. I love it. So you guys are down in Georgia, and I got to ask the question, what came first? The dental practice or the dental lab? Say definitely the practice first. It's actually, I'm a dental brat. I'm actually a third generation dentist. My my granddad started this in 1954. He hung a shingle out here. He got out of school and uh, came to this area. And then uh, my dad followed suit. And then I followed suit after that. And then good old Patch joined up with us when I was in school. And then uh, I got fresh off the boat and uh, started working with this this fellow here so i've been spoiled right from the get-go absolutely it's been an adventure ever since so you've never got to work at a practice that sent work out it was all done right there all done right there my, my only experience with that was with school you know in school the lab was this place where crowns got sent and shades got chains and contacts got taken away you know the way they'll the, the <laughs> way the big dark black hole is the perspective yep. from dental school and then and it comes back to you in, in dental school it's like three or four months later and so you get drilled with it you know it's never the dentist's fault it's the that lab what do they do to that right you know yeah yeah everything was just fine and we had the new employee work on it that's yeah, what we always say guys, they, always, the student, they always get the new guy to the students right when they get yeah. the <laughs> So it was your dad that decided to have a lab in, or did your grandfather have a lab? It's actually dad. We built a uh, newer location, and uh, we we built space for a, a new lab. But when I was 16 years old, we moved into this place. I spent my whole spring break moving the old office and into this place, and he added space for it and built it, made room. And, you know, if you build it, they will come. And uh, hmm. you know, that's, he grew into it. And I actually started out with my brother was our technician for a while. Yeah, oh, my really? Super brother. And uh, he worked away into it. And um, I always joke that he was the smartest brother because my, my younger brother is a dentist. I'm a dentist. My older brother was the smartest one. He married a dentist. He, he <laughs> married a pediatric dentist. So he went to go help her with her practice. And then so we had a need for a, a technician while I was in school. And then um, Patch had a need for a dentist and a, a need for growth. And then I know I guess Patch can kind of tell you how that relationship grew from there while I was trying to get out of school and back here. Sure. That's, I was going to ask Patch that. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. You know, I've, I've been a lab tech since 1983. I uh, retired from the Air Force in 2003, and and I had a couple of uh, dental laboratories out in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And my wife had followed me around my whole career in the Air Force. And my father passed away and he lived here in Warner Robins in the house I grew up in. And uh, one day I just looked at my wife after my father had passed, my mother had already preceded him. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, you know, you followed me all over the world. What do you want to do? And she just said that she wanted to move back home. So uh, I sold the labs that I was involved in and, and packed up, moved back here. And it, Interestingly enough, I had kind of made up my mind that I was going to venture out and maybe try something else. Yeah, right. <laughs> as, as, uh, Nobody ever gets out. Right, right. As life would have it, I, I couldn't even uh, find a job. This was back in the big crash of 2009, 2010 oh, as we yeah. moved back here to yeah. town. And I, I couldn't even find a job doing anything. So I asked her for a loan from our savings and I built what I had open as Eagle Dental Laboratory here in Warner Robins. And, you know, I did it in a philosophy that was a little different than the other labs. Instead of making the equipment that I had work for what I was going to do, I kind of defined for myself what was the quality standard that I wanted to be able to produce. And then I went out and got those pieces of equipment that would allow me to more easily do that. And uh, my idea was never to own a laboratory. I'd, you know, you got to be a certain... You got to have a certain knack. Yeah. You you have a certain knack for owning. You you really, you know, my business partner that I had, he was really the business side of it. I I enjoyed the technical part of it. You know, I like getting my hands dirty and and that sort of thing in the laboratory. And I wasn't going to own a lab. And, uh, you know, that's the only job I could find. So I opened a lab. And within 30 days, I had more work that I can handle. I had a part time in 60 days. A part time was full time. In 90 days, me and a full-time and a part-time could barely keep up with the work, and I was right back to the same thing. 
gig of, you know, six yeah. days a week, 14, 15 hours a day, you know, the usual story. Yeah. And Dr. Bell, Dr. Jack's dad, Dr. Bell Jr., called me and we did a couple of big cases together. And he asked me if I was interested in his account. And I, I had him and his uh, son, Corey, come over and do an interview. I wanted him to see that I was different than other places. You know, I was serious about it. I wasn't just taking whoever came in the door. And I told him, I said, I'm considering this a job interview. And he kind of looked at me strangely. And I said, I do not want to own a lab. I want to work for a dentist. Uh, wow. That's where I want to be, you know, because those were the most fun years when I was in the military. It was being in the clinical environment, being able to go downstairs, take custom shades, adjust shades, and just be there to see the final appliances go in. You know, we can only do this job for a certain amount of time. I'm 56 this year and 10, 12, however many years, my hands are going to shake too much and I can't see. <laughs> I'm going to go out having the most fun I've had in dentistry. And I can tell you this job has not let me down in that. I am having a blast every single day. I tell these guys, the only way you're going to get me out of here is if you call the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it only you in the lab? Are you doing everything or do you have some people helping you? That's a good question. Uh, we've been up to as many as three, including myself. I'm a CDT. Uh, we're a certified dental laboratory. Right. The lab name itself, Excel Dental Laboratory. And we've had up to three full-time technicians. Right now, it's myself and what I would call a journeyman lab technician, someone who is experienced and we're able to handle the work just fine. Uh, Sherry really helped us out recently, and that's how the name came up, because we just bought a Roland 52 from her, and I'm telling you, it is amazing. We are being able to uh, cut our turnaround time significantly. The quality, uh, we've been able to stabilize with bringing milling in-house, so we're nothing but happy about that. We do use some key outsource folks. If we've got some big cases that our machines can't mill, uh, we you get, use guys like Matt over at Axis, uh, you know, we have a, a friendship with All Things Dental here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. We kind of try to keep it, you know, local. We like to search within our state oh, yeah. to see who can help us first and then reach out over that. But everything's made in America. Everything is touched, you know, by our production line at some point and then certainly in the final process of it. But that's kind of what we do here in a nutshell. We're a full service lab. Uh, we do everything from start to finish for the most part. So, Dr. Bell, are you scanning everything? We try to embrace the digital dentistry side of things. I love all the aspects of it. I have my moments of love-hate relationship with digital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most labs do, too. Yeah. Yep. The days were the greatest in the days I'm ready to throw it out the window. But we try to incorporate a lot of it. Now. I, mean, I love getting in with the, the scanning. I love playing with the CAD and the CAM. I love getting out there in, in three shape and cussing at it and then getting in there. <laughs> playing with printers in the mill. It's been great. Like I said, I love all the aspects of it. So the digital dentistry is really what's set us off. That's why I really have found my niche, have, having fun with it. That's what Patch and I are yeah. playing with. What, what can we do next and how can we hack this next software, push it. So being in the same building together and partnering with each other, do you when you're looking at new technology, do you guys kind of talk about it and look at it together? See what works for both parties. Oh yeah, it's all. Oh yeah, it's a dream effort on both of us. Like, what what can we do next? And what can what, uh, where where should we go with this? We started with printing with us first in house. We had three shape initially, and then as as I came out of school, I started learning about digital impressions. So we didn't do any of that. We have that tarot system we started with. Mm -hmm. And I started slowly seeing the capabilities of it. And it, um, you're always hesitant from school because you got all the professors going PBS, you know, this, this stuff won't work. And this was, you know, six, eight years ago. Sure. And then we've slowly started embracing more and more. And then um, I started seeing these posts on like uh, from like Blue Sky Bio. They're really big into the, you know, allowing dentists to take more control of things and, and tinker. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, started embracing playing with the printers, and it, that was a fun journey. With its up and downs, still is ups and downs. And then we've I started doing more hands on dentistry, playing with like mesh mixer and learning to do my wax ups. I really started em embracing. Um, went down to the Dawson Academy and Spear training uh, with that. Nice. I was going to ask you that because that's right in my backyard. I've, that was my next question. If you yeah. attended any of Dawson. So oh, it was great. Yeah. My granddad actually graduated with Dr. Dawson at Emory. Wow. So uh, it's, it, we've been a Dawson family for a while. Wow. Now we've been kind of updating, digitizing the Dawson technique and then and, and embracing those systems. So that's, it's been a real fun journey. Now we're starting to play more in the milling. Last year, I've really got into in-house milling and that's been a game changer for us. And 
uh, developing that has, has been fun. Yeah, you mentioned that patch that you guys just got a Roland DW50? Uh, 52. Mm-hmm. 52, yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the disc changer. You must be doing work for other dentists. That's a heck of a machine. Heck yeah. Uh, no, that's just in here. We have Dr. Bell Jr., Dr. Jack's dad. We have Dr. Jack. We also have Dr. Ken Colson. We had one dentist who just transitioned out from here, but but those guys, they have their system downstairs worked out. Each of the doctors have multiple chairs, up to three chairs each, and they crank the workout. It's two people full-time all day to keep up with what they do. Right now, the Roland's back there milling four night guards for me that I need tomorrow, and uh, all three printers that we have are printing about 15 models tonight, so we'll put all that together in the morning and send it wow. down to your insert. So it's a busy place, but I, you know, I'm here yeah. to tell you that digital, you know, we've been, uh, myself have been around digital for many years. We had a Sarek in lab at the laboratory that I owned in Colorado Springs. So we've been around the digital realm. You know, it doesn't always make sense for a small lab to necessarily have a milling machine. You got to have the production for it, or you have to have the demand for quality. And I'm upstairs. I'm only 19 steps away from the clinic. So I'm only 19 steps away from a happy visit or a not so happy visit. <laughs> I much prefer the happy visit. So I, I try oh, to yeah. keep that going as much as I can. That's just insane. A DW52 for one practice. I mean, that's just a hefty mill. I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. Oh, yeah. There was one night that we milled, I think, 20 units of yttrium zirconium, zirconia work. And then uh, milled four or five night guards or bases for dentures. I mean, we're running everything through the the mill we possibly can. So, so you guys are digital dentures then? Oh yeah, uh-huh. we invested the doc saw the need for and invested in the Ivoclar denture module, and that has really been a huge value plus for us. Their workflows are very slick. Uh, It opens up quite a few digital tooth forms and ways that you're able to manipulate denture teeth, making custom denture teeth basically for every patient. And I'm telling you, I I absolutely love it. We're doing wax try-in turnaround times, uh, some of them in four days. Uh, You know, right now we're printing the arches of teeth and milling the bases, then bringing them together and sending them downstairs for a try-in. But next we're going to start running the arches through the Roland and let it mill out, you know, some sort of ivory wax, beige wax, and then marry that to the pink wax try-in base material. So it's, it's really good. It fits our needs perfectly. So again, I'm assuming you guys looked at that technology together. Do you guys go to courses together or do you have people come visit you and explain everything to you? I mean, how do you, what does that look like for the both of you to make everybody happy? We're pretty tight knit ship over here. We really emphasize on working together. We go to courses together. We've flown all over Chicago, Miami. We went up, you know, to lab day. We love going playing with the toys and that's where, you know, I love the dental side of it, but I really love the technical side of it too. When I started embracing it. So like, you know, one of my favorite movies, have y'all seen the Ford versus Ferrari movie? Yeah. I have not yet. It's, it's amazing. Well, one of the drivers and it's played by, um, his name is Ken miles in life, but the, the actor was, um, the guy was in Batman, the, um, Christian Bale. Bale. Yes. So in real life, that cat was, it's based on him and Carol Shelby in their racing career. But Ken miles is a really cool race car driver back in the day. He was one of those who was not only just get in the car and raced it, but he would get in and he knew mechanically what was going on behind the scenes. He could tell you, no, the car has a problem with it, but here's why. Yeah. So that's been kind of real my philosophy too. Cause a lot of times the drivers or the dentist will get in and say, this is not fitting and just here, send it back. Must be something wrong. Right. But from my standpoint is I want to know mechanically what's going on. So I want to know the whole streamline process so I can understand what is happening and why, and we can work through that together. Yeah. Being the fact that we're vertically integrated in house from what we control the design manufacture and acquisition process has just been able for us to make things that almost just literally just drop in off the mill. Cause we can calibrate to our, Ourselves. And so I enjoy every aspect of it. I'll get in here, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning and come in and I'm firing the mill up, <laughs> doing the wax ups and getting that. But we fired before I see patients. It's a fun process, but I like to know all the different aspects. And it's helped so much in our clinically because when I have an issue, I can realize, OK, you know, when you, with digital dentistry in general, I break it down and there's either three things going on. It's either an acquisition error on my part or design error. Sometimes the software has poo poo moments. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah, lots of them. Then you got your cam. You know, I've realized now I've started camming my own stuff when I fire up the mill. 
that I can realize, okay, maybe I picked the wrong strategy or I didn't identify a surface. Here's what happened, you know, so I, I, I can work through stuff so much quicker and figure out how to maximize our technology. We did one the other day where we did a same day hybrid and we were able to do an immediate low and delayed immediate low where we wow. put all the teeth in, put the implants in. We made an impression jig and we milled the arch overnight. And the next morning at a 24 hour check, I screwed in the arch and it just boop, drops in. You know, that's, it's the coolest wow. thing to, to work. Through. That's amazing. That is amazing. Wow. <laughs> that's Cool. It's been fun. So it's all, you know, investing in each other. We're, our communication is literally, I'm up and down the lab all day. I do a patient, do a hygiene check, come up here to lab check. Okay, Patch, let's see this. And we'll, we'll work through this next adventure. So it, it's an awesome journey of growth together. And, you know, Patch is just like this artist, man, that I can just soak up all this talent from and just watch him. Mm-hmm. He gets mad when I take pictures of the work he's doing. He's, he's a little insecure about his man hands. But, all uh, of us are. But he's like, oh, heavy fingers in all these shots. I'm like, Patch, but this is the artist that happened here, man. This is the bad, the bone part. Send them to me. I like man hands. <laughs> He'll come stand over my shoulder and watch me work, and I'll just stop working, and I'll just say Groot. <laughs> <laughs> have those moments. It's a fun journey. It's fantastic. You know, I'm an old school lab tech and and I like the doctor to be leading the way. And uh, when he had come out of school, he kind of said, you know, what do you think the best way for us to work together, Patch, would be? I said, that'd be for you to lead the way and uh, tell me where you want to go. And and man, I'm telling you what, he grabbed that like I have not seen before. He um, asked me to start showing him three shape, how to do the designs. And he wanted to to learn how to pin the design. So he's now he's doing all of his own diagnostic wax ups. And here's a, for instance, we have something that we say in the industry, you know, uh, every case is a full mouth rehab, one tooth at a time over a period of 30 some years. And, mm. and there's a lot of truth to that, especially when you're a family dentist, like we are here, you know, we'll see the same patients for years on end through this practice. I mean, they've been around over 50 years wow. and I see people coming in with their grandchildren who have visited the practice before. And that, that does a lot for me to really want to invest in Family Dental Associates, which is the name of the clinic here. Aww. One of the awesome things is the way he does that. He'll come in and do a full arch diagnostic. He'll do uh, gothic arch tracings, which you, you both know is next level. Do gothic arch tracings on someone and then design a full arch. And he'll come in and do composite buildups on everything, get all the occlusion worked out, get the plane leveled out. And then as a patient needs number 30 done, we just restore to what he's already diagnostically produced, you know, in a composite that that the patient's wearing, and then we'll replace that too. And we're slowly doing those cases that that kind of spans out the time for a patient to be able to fund the next portion of the restorative uh, journey or voyage, as we like to call it, because, you know, we've kind of got a, a pirate theme here. And we enjoy being on that voyage with patients. And, you know, there's, it's really satisfying. I'm sure you all have experienced to be able to go and, and see your work get put in. And, you know, someone who walked in, uh, the latest case that we did, he only had two teeth in his entire head. And he'd walked around for years like that. And uh, we were able to do a, a really nice upper and lower hybrid on him. Yeah. He was just so pleased to have invested that in himself to be able to to change his smile. And it, it does a lot for us, too. Wow. I know. It's so I'm a ceramist by nature as well, and I just absolutely love when I get to go chair side and go clinical and, you know, see everything go in. I do shades and things like that, but it's really super gratifying to see somebody. It changes their whole persona, their life, their smile, their attitude, their energy is just awesome. I love it. I wish I could do what you're doing, just saying. (laughs) Come on out anytime. Come on. (laughs) He needs the help, obviously. (laughs) He's got a lot going on. When do you get to practice dentistry, Dr. Jack? I hear you spending a lot of time in the lab looking at three shape and doing white waxes. Right. I could get a lot more of that done if it weren't for all these patients. Uh, (laughs) So like that's my day. The big thing is, you know, like the balanced lifestyle. We actually had a a team meeting with uh, the whole practice this morning talking about balance and it's hard to find that, but I'm a morning person. So like I get in here 5 a.m., I get about an hour to two hours to get my lab work done. And then it's 7.30 to yeah. 4 patient time. And then after that, it's family time. Yeah. I'm trying to keep that balance going because I want to be able to sustain tough. this. It is, it is tough, man. And I really respect you guys because I know when like when the, the machine fails or it's out of cow, burr breaks. And then you got to, you know, Patch and I have had some late nights where we're like, man, we got to get this milled out for the morning or printed out to get this case squared away. So you guys are the unsung heroes by all means. I really appreciate that more. And I think the dentists don't 
appreciate what y'all do a lot. I'll go ahead and say it too. You know, most of the time with my experience now, it is the dentist's fault. I'll just go ahead, <laughs> I'm going to be brave and say that I'm going out there yeah. you guys. And I, I won't say that when I'm speaking to a bunch of dentists, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it is, it is our fault. It's ownership, man. I'm real big in extreme ownership, man. You know, if you listen to the Jocko podcast, uh, will yeah, yeah. the man, but uh, I've really embraced that man. It, it's on me either way. I think with the scanning, you guys can see visually exactly what you need to do. So, you know, I think that being able to scan these impressions and send them to printing and be able to look at the die and mark the margin and the whole thing makes all of us better personally. It does help. And it's just, you know, learning to recognize diff- it's just different errors induced. You know, it's not like the PVS, you can see the drags and the blubs or you can tell if they bit down on the impression tray sometimes versus scanning. Sometimes it's just hidden and different finding the errors. And, it, you know, we, we had issues with splints for a while where we figured out you know, is it the manufacturing process or is it the, the scan flow, the way you're scanning that arch is main effect. I mean, and that's what we'll do in Tinker sometimes. Like I'll take the same patient or myself or, you know, one of the team members and I'll scan them three different ways and we'll mill out the splint with three different scans, same settings and see what's different. I mean, we're constantly doing that. It's a constant tinkering for us yeah. and learning what's to maximize it so we can figure it out. Cause it, it bugs me, man. We stay up late, just like at, late at night <laughs> in bed. Like, why did that not fit? You know, it drives me nuts when I mean, it should have just been able to throw it in from across the room, you know, like what, what's going on. <laughs> it's not like you could just send it back to the lab and then have them redo. Oh wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you've got like a single unit, are you doing crowns in a day or do you give patch, you know, a couple, two, three, four days or what, how do you guys work through those cases? Yeah, it depends if he's pissed me off or not. I'll say, hey, Patch, I need that now. Um, but, um, no, um, we're working in that crown today. That's been a dream of my dad's, and we want to make that happen for him to be able to get it done in a single day. We've done a few. It's it's not fast as we would like, but we're getting there. The quality is amazing. We've also, you know, in addition to the Roland, I've got a, a true mill. That was the first mill we bought. I bought it kind of for myself as my toy it's from 3D BioCAD, and it's a wet, dry mill, and I can throw some Emacs on there, and so we can have a little bit longer appointment, but we can do a few same days. And it's been great. We all have walkie talkies. So Patch has got his radios on. I'm down there clinically going, Hey, uh, Patch, I got a scan ready for you. Load it up. Does Maverick have the ball? You know, are you on it, man? And he'll start firing up and then he'll radio back down. Hey, Dr. Jack, ready to cam it. Throw it in the mill, man. <laughs> That's got to be fun. Oh my Lord. For us, the, uh, the same day crown challenge is I think more so not necessarily the milling machine itself, because, you know, they've got milling machines that can try to crank it out really quickly. I think we're running into a barrier is how fast we can mill the material. Yeah. You know, the material of choice right now is is Emacs. There are some limitations in the speed that you can mill that, you know, you can introduce cracks and things like that. We can't afford a PM1, which is the, the newest release on their, their kind of their quick mill for their Emacs material. So I think as they come up with strategies to be able to mill that a little quicker, you know, all we need really in the, in the lab to be able to do it is, is a consistent time. You know, we've timed everything, you know, by cuspids, we can mill in about 12 minutes. We wipe out a little bit of that really deep tertiary anatomy. You know, we have some nice fossils with some secondary anatomy there, but, you know, we don't try to get too crazy with a 0.6 burr down into a little, you know, micro fossa and a molar. Uh, We can mill that anywhere from 16 to 18 minutes. Sometimes the bigger, thicker ones might take a little bit longer, but it's about consistency, being able to put that out there. And, you know, not, not every patient is a same day crown candidate. And uh, so they're elective in who they're picking. I think that as we continue on down the road of, of marrying milling machines into clinical environment, I think we're going to see the standard of care that become the standard of care is a same day or same appointment uh, crown. And, you know, the fits are just amazing. You know, even the best temporaries that, that are made out there, even if a temporary is perfect, still wear, you know, from the periodontal ligament, the tooth uh, moving up and down, you'll get some some abrasion, some erosion of those interproximal contacts. And even a, a well-made temporary and with a well-made crown can sometimes have interproximal uh, contact issues. And one of the things about being in the clinic is, is, is being able to dial in specifically those contacts for each of the providers. Cause you know, every, every provider is a little bit different. They like them a different way. You know, one client, you may use shim stock and the other, you may use 
a carbon marking paper or, or whatever it may be. But being able to have those milling systems in-house, we can set those parameters and very few contact issues on those same day crowns. So we're real happy with that. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's been fun. And that's, you know, one of the things with us, we like to try to do it the best we can. And our egos were bad to the bone dental. Part of it is because bad dental was already taken. But uh, (laughs) the thing we were, as we started growing together, you know, where bad to the bone came from is, um, I was going to ask that. As we started growing, I started growing professionally. Package was already a huge professional trained technician. I was a young, wet, ignorant dentist. But as I started growing professionally and our cases started growing and I started learning and we, coming up with ways we're in a you know, middle Georgia town. This is uh, not a, uh, it's a well-to-do middle class area, not a, not a high end area, not low end, but we got a lot of working class people mm-hmm. here. So we, we started learning these high end techniques. And one thing we wanted to do was find a way to economically do high end industry, make things affordable for people with, you know, a nice end product, not a, and not sacrifice on quality. Sure. Mm-hmm was our goal. So we wanted to, you know, we, we started, let's go learn as much as we can, learn these techniques. And then if we bring it in house, we can kind of hack a few things or, or pirate some techniques, as we uh, say, bring it to the people, kind of like a Robin Hood technique. So, yeah. So did you guys both get together on the bad to the bone? Yeah, I was actually at a course and I'd had a few beers one night and I was texting Pat back and forth about what I was learning. I was learning some, uh, some implant grafting things. And uh, I think I was down at a Picos course or something down oh, there. And, uh, my neighborhood too. Yeah, I like. So I spent a lot of time down in that area, but yeah. uh, it's like Dental Alley that and Scottsdale. Those are the two like magnets oh, for dental, yeah. uh, dental classes. But I was down late one night. I was playing around. I was like, you know, we're doing all this cool stuff. We need to have like a put on like our alter ego, our superhero moment when we put, do these cases. We're not just family dental. We're, we're going to be bad to the bone dental. That's cool. And so <laughs> we, I sat down on my phone and started photoshopping logos. And I, I made our logo on my iPhone. I found this implant logo and a skull and started putting it together with the the sickle and the the explorer. We yeah, and the skull with the dental implants in it. So this is going to be us, bad to the bone, baby. So we uh, we made the logo, created the Facebook page, and then actually just got it trademarked at the end of the year. And let's just print shirts out. And so when we started doing like these hybrid cases, we actually got a flag printed too. So we literally go out and hoist the colors. <laughs> really? And uh, when, when a hybrid patient comes in and we fly the flag and the, the, the Jolly Rogers flying out there and, you know, I go by my pirate bad to the bone names, Captain Jack Marrow, and we got patches of the pirate come in and it's time to have a hybrid, man. So we, we like to put on the, the pirate show and uh, cool. the patient comes in, we've got decals. So when the patient finishes up, we play the, uh, the music from Pirates of the Caribbean and we present their teeth in a treasure chest. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, break out, they get to be part of me crew, as we say. Oh, that's great. And so it's been fun. We had a fun with it. But we, and what's, what brings me the joy is making something possible for people thought they never could afford it, like doing these beautiful hybrids and making it obtainable for people. And that, that's where it's really fun, as we, like I said, we're the, the pirates bringing hope to the people. I love that. That's fantastic. I was going to ask where that came from, and you just explained it all, and it's perfect. Dr. Jack Marrow, what'd you say? Marrow and Patch? Patch is the pirate, yep. Yeah, Patch is the pirate. Yeah. Do you ever have patients well, looking at you a little weird when the whole pirate thing comes out, or are they all pretty game That's for it? happening long before Battle of the Bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've luckily kind of known us a lot because we're developing relationships. One of our core values at the office is relationships. So by the time we've gotten spend this time together. And this has been a year, year and a half sure. into putting up with me. They know me by now that when I whip out the pirate thing, they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. What expect. Yeah, don't, it's not right. something quite I pull out on the new patients, but yeah. the, uh, <laughs> it's not exactly a practice builder from that standpoint. But once they do it, once they get to develop the relationship with you, then you can whip out your pirate ego. You know, it's, do you ever lean into them with like a hook hand just to kind of freak them out a little bit? <laughs> oh, dude, we celebrate. We like, you know, September 19th is our national holiday. That's National Talk Like a Pirate Day. And whenever yes. it falls on the office day, we really bust it out. That was, it was sad this year. It fell on a Saturday. So I had to harass my kids with a, in a pirate voice all day. But um, usually it's I'm harassing my team members with it. So we, <laughs> we bust it out. We have done a video with a hook every nice. now and then. So you talk a lot about the hybrids. Are you planning the implants and are you guys fabricating surgical guides? Oh yeah, man. We, we try to do it all. We'll do a, uh, and what's, what's cool about having patch here. So we'll do all our mock-ups out uh, digitally. We might mock up the case, see, get the CT scan, do all our pre-planned implant positions, do our prosthetic mock-up and patches right over here on my shoulder. So when I get my initial surgical 
guy designed everything. We'll, we'll go sit here and stand up, put it on the big screen in the lab and just walk through the case before we even touch the patient. Wow. Nice. That's awesome. And we'll do it all kind of in here in house. And that's really helped to fully control everything. And we can, we'll use the blue sky program. We'll use the three shape for the mock-up and then we'll, we'll break into mesh mixer to hack things because we'll, we'll do our own kind of stackable guide system that we can make ourselves. Wow. And it looks at immediate load provisionals. We can kind of design our own way for those. And we're still playing. Every system's different for us. Like, you know, Patch always jokes, what's my best case? And we always say, hopefully it's our next case. There you go. It's always tinkering and playing. It's fun. You said you do diagnostics. So do you get it? get in there at five o'clock in the morning and you design and then do you mill your wax? Initial mock-ups a lot of times I'll mock it up in three shape and then print the model then do like a make a matrix from that from a regular just model resin mm -hmm. and then make an intraoral matrix and then a lot of times what's great about that is we can do an intraoral mock-up for the patient so they can see it on themselves because yeah. um, they can look at pictures and models they don't get up and they see it on their face it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see it themselves with a mirror because that's how the patient sees themselves. You know, and yeah. we'll, we'll operate with the smile designer in three shape. What's great too about having patch ears, like I'm doing a new patient workup. And all our new patients now, we do an Itero scan on them because so they come in and do the full diagnostic photos. So I can radio up on patch and say, hey man, can you work up the smile for me on that case? And he'll do a quick 2D mock-up and he can show the patient right then and there while I'm doing the exams. Like, hey, this is what we want to do for you. Wow. And it's right there. That's amazing. It is great, but it's still something different when you do those intraoral mock-ups because, you know, we found studies that when a patient looks at themselves, a photo of themselves versus like the mirror image of themselves, they will typically pick the mirror image of themselves over the photo because that's how they see themselves. So something about when you hand them a mirror and they can see it on themselves, that's when you get their kind of their true perception on that. But that's really is a game changer for us is that initial mock-up and then doing that 3D intraoral try-in mock-up has really helped. Yeah, I bet kind of like trying on clothes. I mean, you can kind of picture it on you, but when it's actually in your mouth and you're smiling, not that clothes are in your mouth, but when you <laughs> I was going to say, what do you, you actually see it? What are you, you know, doing, Barb? Fits, you know about the shape and I love that. Sorry, Elvis. Yeah, you know me in clothes. <laughs> One of the big cool things for me about working with Dr. Jack and he, he, I don't know if we mentioned that you did an AEGD residency along with dental school. So he had extra training. So when he hit the ground running here, it was, uh, we did two crowns and they said that let's press on the gas a little bit. And the third case we did was a 23 unit full mouth rehab on a young lady. And so that, that was kind of the introduction there. So he's not afraid of, <laughs> you know, like I said, uh, you know, having him dictate to me, which is the way that we really want it to go because there's buy-in from the patient, the doctor, and then the lab tech should be the last one that that kind of comes in and, and builds it to their design, but also uh, uses the experience that we have as lab technicians, knowing materials, areas that we really shouldn't take materials, uh, ones that, that may fail or to select a different material to be used on a case. That's where all the team members kind of, you know, there's like a focal point of excellence. That's really what we try to do. You know, with him being involved in the process from start to finish just makes the difference in the cases that we're doing. You know, I can't tell you over the years how many times I've sat down to, to do a, a six-unit anterior bridge on 6 through 11 and didn't even get a diagnostic wax up with the case. And, you know, oh, what yeah. you, do, you just you throw the template on it. And that isn't always what patient needs. So, you know, just being able to use three shape and build my wax up, digital wax up, crown design into what he's already pre-planned. I know exactly where he's going and he's set a course. He's chartered a course for us to follow on the entire treatment plan for as long as the patient's here getting work done. And that's from the very get-go. So that the work is invested up front and the payoff is over the long term. Uh, with the patient and, and taking care of them. That's one of the big reasons that relationship is so important to us with patients. We'll go out of the way to make a patient happy and satisfied. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing what you guys are doing. I love it. What are you looking at to do next? What's the next piece of equipment? Oh, yeah. That's a great question. What is the next piece of equipment? We've already got our eye on it. It's a printer. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Does it start with a C and end with an Arbin? <laughs> You're not there yet. I, it's tempting, but man, I uh, I don't know if I'm, oh, it's a car payment, man. That thing yeah, is, uh, it is. It's at least Honda Civic, and they, they've got an interesting program. I know y'all are starting to dive that way, but um, we're not there yet. I've been looking at the Ega, the Segas. I kind of balance getting my foot yeah. over there. We've uh, we've played with some other printers over the years, and I may uh, step up to that. 
as we wear through these other printers that's going on. I'm always, I'm, I'm on a mill kick right now, man. I'm always, I got, I always go out there and that's my baby right now. So, um, more mills, right? Uh, <laughs> the printing, you mentioned the carbon. Early on, we went to a Lee Culp course up in, where's he at? North sure. How was that? Yeah, it's out of Raleigh. I can't remember the name. A great course. Yeah. Culture Studios with Lee. Yeah, he was just getting a carbon printer, and we sent several models up to them. And they, they did some prints for us just so we could get a look at it. It was mainly mm-hmm. on implant models. Um, we've been struggling a little bit with uh, getting what we consider to be process accurate printed models on, on what we were using. So we tried that. And uh, recently, the folks at All Things Dental just got one. And uh, we had them print a couple of their flexible night guard material. Mm-hmm. The key is the key plant. Key, key print or the key, key splinter key. or something. Key, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's all it's like, supposed to be like the thermoplastic sensitive yeah. one. It's pretty good to fit. We put it on one of our team members up front and um, no complaint so far. It, it dropped in pretty good. And, um, and that's been a fight with us because like the printing has been more of a fight with the consistency than the milling. The millings, I was just so impressed because like you just about get in what you put in as long as you get it cammed right. But the printing still a bit of voodoo for me because we're finding different distortions in the models. We had such a time with contact. Patch and I joke, we could do a full arch hybrid, no problems, no adjustment, occlusion just right. But then we go to a single unit and it whoops our butt. The contacts are wide open or closed. And what we found yeah. for us was going, having issues with the models. I checked my scanning. I worked through all my scan flows. We would go through the cam and the CAD. We were checking everything in three shape. Like, is there an error? Is it distorting something with the margins? What the heck's going on here? And then we came out to the models. Like, well, let's, sign. let's just rule the models out. Let's do model lists. Let's just go ahead and mill the crown and as is, glaze it and seat it. And it like just dropped in. Yeah. And we're like, oh, crap. What's yeah. happening? It was just fresh. That and single unit implants. You know, we're milling our in house yeah. titanium custom abutments and, and a crown, and we're doing those no model. Yeah, it's dropping it beautifully. The contours are awesome. Wow, you guys are even milling your own abutments. Well, True Mill from 3D Bike, yeah, that thing is the jam. It's great for me to tinker. I can throw Emacs on there, I can throw Pectin, I can throw a titanium custom abutment on there and knock that out, and it does a beautiful job. Wow, you guys seriously have a one stop shop going on down there. We love it. That's that's been the control, man. Of being able to do all the different steps of the manufacturing process. That in our early days, I'd want to do something kind of out there, and we get a little bit of pushback. So well, we can't do that. We can't pull it off with this equipment. You know, from your standpoint, you guys are it's production based lab. It takes time, and your time is valuable. Mm. And so it's tough to to stop production to try to do a special one off case or a custom. You know, take time away from your mill because you know you're eating up mill time. That's how many units you can crank out. So being able for us, you know, we're not based on production. We're based on, you know, the, the quality of what we can pull off. And it's, it's our time. We can spend the time. It may take longer to mill or more time to figure out how to do it, but it, it allows us to play and, and have control and for it to fix. We're like, man, what? it's just been freeing for us. Uh, it's a burden and freeing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to find time to R&D you know, in a lab because we're always just producing, 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 but it's nice that you're in a situation where you can work on the bugs. Yeah. It's a, it's a love hate thing, but it's great. And, you know, cause y- y'all know it's tough cause you're kind of dictated by what the lab script says, what the dentist is marketing, you know, and we, oh, yeah. we can kind of work together on that. So I've got this new material, but you can bounce it back and openly say, man, no, this sucks. Don't do this. It's this a stupid idea. <laughs> or we can, <laughs> we can proceed with it. I was wondering if you guys do any lecturing together, or if you have any plans to. It would be fun. You know, I like teaching. I, I go and help at the uh, dental school a lot with the, the residency program and help them out. We actually were trying to bring them back here to do some hands-on working with the printers and the milling and the scanning to show them the whole workflow. Yeah. But eventually it would be nice to, to get there. I love learning and I, I love helping others. So yeah. I, I enjoy teaching people. So it would be a, f- a fun project to undertake. That's certainly why I asked the question, because it sounds like you guys kind of have a lot to offer. Take this pirate ship on the road, man. (laughs) Set her to sea, right? Get her out of port. (laughs) One of my assignments in the military was uh, being at Shepard Air Force Base, Texas, where I had an opportunity to do four years as an instructor of dental sciences out there. And and instructing and and teaching and training is probably one of the most near and dear things to my heart besides my church life on Sundays. But, you know, I, I just love teaching folks showing folks uh, ways that we found to work it. But what I love most is the relationship that's developed with people I've had an opportunity to work with 
You know, folks that I work with years ago, we still keep in touch and we still learn things from one another. You know, it's just, uh, you know, lab techs, uh, helping lab techs is the way that we're going to get through it. That way we don't end up spending money we don't need and, and relationships. If you've got a machine that that I can make use of on certain cases. We, we need to have those relationships out there to help one another because, uh, you know, these payments that we make on these machines, they're nothing to be, you know, laughed at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The more time it's milling, the, the more time it's paying for itself. I agree. Are you guys doing any zirconia milling? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Roland we're doing uh, zirconia millings, and uh, we recently purchased a Zoopler furnace to fire those, which is... Oh, yeah, uh, I've had those. I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know, the last zirconia furnace I had was the old Vita Envision uh, years and years ago uh, when we first started in this in, in my lab in Colorado. And the furnace we have, the, the quality of the zirconias has come just within the last four years, uh, leaps and bounds. You know, when oh, I first yeah. look at, at Zirconia, when it came out, it was trying to make a tooth that was as white as the sheet of paper oh, into yeah. a shade. And it was like, man, there's, I just can't get there from here. And uh, so we kind of turned away from it for a little while. And then once some of the multi-layered Zirconias came out and I got to look at some work uh, when I was up at Phil Reddington and uh, Lee Mullins, they did a course over at GC that I went to. Dr. Jack had sent me out there to take a look at that on the BDT technique. And uh, man, this just the quality of the zirconias had come a long way. So, you know, we've come back around and embraced that now. And we're doing uh, some micro layering with, uh, with Mio. I consider it micro Oh, I love Mio. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it's really uh, taken zirconias to a different level. Totally agree. And I'll be honest with you. I just checked out Mio when we were on furlough in April. So we uh, furloughed everybody and we got the kit in and I started playing with it. And I absolutely love it. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Amazing. Have you gotten any of the textures yet? The textured glasses? No, actually, I don't think I have. Structure, yeah, structure. Structure, yes. It's been great because I. I've seen a lot of dentists take it up, and I'm like, man, if a dentist can do it, it must be some great stuff. Because <laughs> if, uh, if they can, they they can play with it, and uh, yeah, it, it looks like amazing things. But that Roland's been great too, because we can throw zirconia in, and like right now we've got. We'll, we'll throw in some zirconia disc and then we can throw in some PMMA disc for our splints. And then, you know, it's allowed us to embrace our digital denture side too, because we'll do milled wax bases to try in. And uh, we, I'm re- that's our next kind of journey is really embracing this digital denture game and trying to expedite turnaround on those oh, yeah. has been fun with that. I'm sure trying that's it. helped you quite a bit with the whole bringing better quality at a better price for your patients is the digital dentures. Oh, by all means. Yeah. The strength and the aesthetics of this stuff. And then with the, the milling process has been phenomenal. We still have a few cut in our teeth issues, learning what the limitations of the mill are, but we've come up with some techniques to improve upon that. Like one of the things I, I really love is hydrocast. I don't know if y'all work with much with that for, for functional relines, but you know, our ultimate goal right now is we'll do a milled base, but we'll go ahead and mill in relief space to do a functional reline on it on delivery. Mm-hmm. And they'll function in that hydrocast for a while. Then we'll come back in and do the permanent reline after the patient's functioned with that permanent denture for a while. And this, the fits with that hydrocast have been amazing. Interesting. I've never heard of this. It's like a reline, but the patient wears it for a while. Yes. It's like soft liner, but it never sets up. It's a, it's an awesome product. Dr. Uh, Jack Turbyfield pioneered this back in the day and he's, he's still got a few techniques on it, but it's, it's, it's awesome. So, cause like the one thing you have issues with a mill is that if you have a really big undercut, you know, the mill can't get to yeah. it. So what we'll do is we can go ahead and relieve the inside of that denture in the mill. I go into mesh picture. We'll go patch. We'll go ahead and design the denture. And then I'll go into mesh picture. I can relieve the intaglio surface. And then we can um, basically give us space so that a, the mill can get to it, but also it gives us space for our reline. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go in and place hydrocast and reline it intra orally. And then the patient will wear that incrementally. And what's neat is as they wear it, they'll have burn through areas in their vestibule where they're under overextended. And I come back in and add more hydrocast. So I'll see them incrementally once a week. And until that's dialed in and the comfort's improved, you pick up all the different frenum attachments. Oh, I bet. It's the ultimate final impression. And then when it's the patient's comfortable, I've got a nice even coat of soft tone and I've got all my vestibular extensions. Then I can send it back up the patch in the morning. He can go ahead and put the permanent hard reline in it. And the patient's got a denture that just is amazing fit and comfort. You know, I don't have to hardly do any adjustments after that. They've worked it all out for me. Do you hard acrylic cure 
that new reline in. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what yeah. you do is uh, you, you take that, you put it on a, a reline jig, uh -huh. maintains the occlusal relationship to the tissue relationship. Then you uh, simply grind out that functional impression material, that hydrocast, and then you just replace it with some either pore acrylic or whatever type of acrylic you want to self-curing. You can also do heat, mm -hmm. heat cure. I prefer self-cured. Uh, but do self-curing, put it in the bean pot, cure it, finish polish, and you're done. You can you know, turn that around and get it back to the patient same day. So they, they're really happy with that. Uh, what's really nice about using mesh mixer, you know, we're talking about hacks. And, and really, that's what Dr. Jack is all about. He can find ways around little things that help him out clinically. And, and mesh mixer paired with and mesh mixer and the only one is just the one we use, but, you know, a yeah. free design software, but that mesh mixer paired with three shape, you know, being able to, to allow you to, to like teleport to the next level from three shape where three shape would argue with you for, for two hours to allow you to do something. You can just jump out, jump in the mesh mixer, teleport to the next level and, and drop it back in three shape, pick it up and move on. And it's meant huge uh, impact on production here in the laboratory, no longer are we sitting there grinding out the inside of a new denture, getting it ready for that functional impression. And we'll do it digitally. He'll do it digitally, whoever, and leave little tissue stops in there to maintain the same vertical dimension of occlusion and fill that up with that hydrocast. And, and eventually the patient makes a functional impression of their soft tissues. And, and I'm here to tell you, they are very retentive. Even the lower uh, dentures, which only has gravity to, to help it stay in place, you yeah. You really have to plug and pull to get that denture out when, when you use hydrocast impressioning and models. So do you rescan the Itaglio surface? So if you have that need to make the denture again, it's already there? You could. You, theoretically, you yeah. could. We, we have taken a temporary denture that has hydrocast in it and scanned that like a duplicate denture. And that way we'll mm -hmm. come out with a model. We'll also come out with a representation of what they have currently, you know, horizontal plane, midline mark, high lip line, cuspid lines, all those things that we would need in a maxillary denture rim for doing a denture and just be able to, to go from the, the very first appointment to skip two or three appointments. And that is where it really impacts clinical dollars. You know, if you take a denture that will typically have, I don't know, anywhere from, from five to six visits, depending, and cut that down to, you know, anywhere from three to four visits, if you can do it in three visits dependably, you know, you've created a whole uh, other treatment slot that would normally oh, sure. by these denture appointments and been able to do something productive. So in the same amount of time, you're, you're getting a lot more value for your dollar. Yeah, I could totally see that. Have you guys had the patient lost denture? I need a new one. <laughs> Let me mill you one and you'll have it next week. It just happened recently, Dr. Jack. Yeah. yeah. I'm getting married on Saturday. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. yeah. I lost my teeth in the ocean and I'm getting married on Saturday. That was my Monday morning like two, three weeks ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, uh, what can we do here? I bet you made it. Yeah, we made it. So we, luckily I had his denture on file and I, this one, the printer saved my butt. We were in the middle of making his final and uh, I had this old file. I, you know, one thing that Dennis can do to really help you out, man, is like the CT scanner is like my lab scanner for me. Yeah. With the denture, throw it in the CT scan and then I can convert that to an SDL and I got my custom tray in a copy of his existing denture right there. That's awesome. So that's an easy way to do it for clinics that don't have a, a lab scanner, a desktop scanner. Wow. But so I luckily I'd had that and I just like, oh crap, let me print this out in some tooth resin for you and threw that in. And so the next day I, here's your, here's your teeth for your wedding, bro. Um, <laughs> this save your bacon a lot. I bet. <laughs> Dr. Jack patch. I appreciate you guys coming on. That was some, uh, that's you guys are doing some amazing things. I don't care what they say about pirates. You guys are really <laughs> killing it down there in Georgia. Yeah. It's been fun. It's a heck of a voyage. Yo ho. Yo ho. Yeah, you that. know, thanks thanks for what you guys are doing out there, Elvis and Barb, you know, getting the word out in the industry, uh, you know, getting us all kind of cross talk that that would typically happen around the table at a training session and and you know, you guys have really bridged a gap that was much needed in our industry, this show being the first of its kind, but also in the midst of this uh, health issue to be able to continue doing what you're doing and being dedicated to, to getting the word out, you know, just from the folks out there who are listening and Dr. Jack and I are, are two that listen, uh, you know, thanks for what you guys do. And it's an amazing uh, impact on our industry. Thank you. Well, that's just because there's great pirates like you willing to talk to us. It's great. I love it. Y'all yeah. helped me through many a Saturday morning cutting grass. I enjoy uh, 
sitting there uh, finally get to, you know, the moments you get to meet your heroes and talk to them. <laughs> well, before we sign off, I got to ask you, Patch, what's yeah. Jack's remake factor? Uh, does he have a lot of remakes? Is he no, a- no, man. <laughs> less, way, way less than one tenth of one percent. I think I in the, what five years, six years you've been out of school, I think he's maybe had maybe three or four, uh-huh. maybe. Nice. You. If he gets too frustrated, he'll come do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't hear about those, yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Guys, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Awesome. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Elvis. How is that Form Labs Form 3B printer going for you guys? It's still going really good. We are still cranking out models and custom trays on it. We love the ease of use. With the resin being loaded by cartridge and the free software that Nest and Ed supports instantly, it's pretty amazing. So you've been talking about it for at least two weeks now, and I think Night Dental needs to get some. Do you think that it could hold up with our workload? We've got probably two to 300 scans a day, and we're printing a lot of models. Wow, that many scans? That's pretty amazing. We don't even come close to that. But I feel that if you had enough of these printers, they could probably handle that high production. All right. But just a few weeks ago, they started shipping out their Form 3L printer. Wow. So they've got a 3B and now they've got a 3L. What do you know about it? Tell me about it. Well, with even a larger build plate, you can print a lot more models or surgical guides every day. And while the 3B that I have only has one laser... The Form 3L has two, so you can be even more productive. Sweet. And I was talking to somebody at Form Labs, and they are getting ready to come out with an orthodontic model resin that's going to significantly increase the print speed for those labs looking to get into clear aligners. Wow. All right, so that sounds like uh, what my lab is looking for. Can you go over with me one more time the website? Yeah, it's super easy. It's formlabs.com forward slash vftb like voices from the bench well this will take you to a page where you can order a sample of something printed on a form labs form 3b printer for free this way you can hold the proof in your hand and see how amazing this printer is all right i'm gonna do it thank you for your support of the podcast form labs we appreciate you yahoy matey We want to give a big thanks to Dr. Jack Bell and Patch Garcia for coming on our podcast and telling us their tale. Super amazing what they are doing in their practice. And, you know, we're usually not big fans of dental offices making their own restorations, but when they employ awesome technicians dedicated to their craft, we can't help but applaud them. A six-puck changing Roland 52D for one practice. That's pretty amazing, right? I tell you, we love hearing from technicians and dentists that are a great team. I really do love that. Talking about the synergy between them really emphasizes the importance of our professions working super close together. If you have a good story about you and your dentist, come on our podcast and tell us about it. You don't even have to have a pirate theme, but hey, it helps. It helps. (laughs) Arrgh, (laughs) Dork. All right, everybody, enjoy your life at sea, and we'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. See you around. Bye. Bye. Oh, I love that.